so in order to get to my fuel relay, which is in behind the dash, I gotta take the dash out, at least the cluster. In order to get that out, we gotta get the steering wheel off. Let's start by taking these little guys out. And then when you push it flush, it locks, and that keeps that open. And that, that just, they lock in a position, they don't come out. Because I'm only going to take the steering wheel down, because I just want to get this out. The only screws I need to take out are these guys, a couple of them underneath there, over here. And then that should be all I really need to, uh, to mess right, with. To lower the wheel, I need to take these two, and these are 12 millimeter at least on my truck. They could be different on your truck. All this stuff changes throughout the years. So I'm gonna take both of these out. Okay, now that both of those are out, which I probably could have left in first because this the steering wheel might slide up, but I don't know. Anyways, there's one here and one here. Those two have to come out. You'll wanna keep a hold on everything because at that point, the steering wheel is gonna come down. It's also a good idea to have your universal joint lined up so it's even with the seat, so that when the steering wheel does come down, it doesn't bind the joint. These upper bolts do in fact look different than the lower bolts, but they are still 12 millimeter. All right, my last one's out. I'm holding the wheel with my shoulder. And I'm just gonna lower it, lower it down. That's it. So that gets that out of my way. Interesting, I can see the relay. I wonder if I can get that out of there without taking the entire dash. All right, the answer to that was no. I can kind of get my hand in there and I can feel it, but it feels like the fuel really is the second one in. I'm just not gonna be able to get to All right. it. I got seven of these little guys out. I think I also need to pull these off because I, I don't think that, uh, I think that cover plate goes with that stuff. All right, now, should be able to just take that out of there. Unless there's something underneath here, which I really hope there isn't. All right, now it looks like one, two, three, four screws on this. All right, those four are out. Um, it looks like this has probably been messed with before because that's that's broke. It's still being held in. My guess is the throttle cable, so I'm going to have to not the throttle cable, the um, spanner cable. So I'm going to reach in from the back, and that should hopefully unscrew or bayonet or something like that. All right, so that is a a press fit from the back. It's got like little side clips. We'll get to see them in just a second. So now I need to tip this forward and then bring this out. All right, full caveat, I uh, went in and washed my hands because uh, I didn't want to get grease all over the front of this thing. There's probably gonna be an electrical connector back here, and there is. So I'm pressing the button up on the top. We'll wiggle that until it hopefully comes out. Maybe another one, yep. Another one over here, same thing. Press the button on the top. Ugh, wiggle it till it comes out. All right, another thing to note on my dash. I'm gonna have to address the fuel gauge because the fuel gauge looks to be stuck. So I'm probably gonna have to take that apart and take a look at that. Okay, so at this point, I'm in here and I think it's the second relay, not this first one. So I turned the ignition on, I could feel that second one clicking more and I would assume that that's the one, that's the fuel relay. This is like really bad placement for them. So one way or the other, I'm probably gonna disconnect both of those. But like if, if you looked at it at first glance, it's uh, they look the same. <laughs> so I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull them down and then uh, take a look. All right, before I do all that, I push this over a little bit more. I'm just getting this out of the way because I don't want that in the way. And honestly, with all the junk that's inside of it, I think I'm gonna wash this stuff out while it's out here. You can see all the 
junk that's in here and cat hair and every other thing. So this is a good time to clean out. Okay. This may seem like a little bit of sidetracking, but while I've got all this stuff open, you can press on all these tabs here and then the ones down on the opposite side. And this whole thing will come off. And that exposes your gauges. So like, for example, if you're super, super gentle. So if I let that go, yeah, boop, it goes back down into acceptable uh, ranges. Same thing with the speedometer. My fuel gauge. Yeah, not so much. So this should be going back down there and you can feel there's a lot of resistance in here. I think it's just old age dust and, uh, and a whole bunch of other junk. So I'm gonna take the three screws on the back of here, pull that gauge out and see if I can clean it up a little bit and get it to function again. Cause a fuel gauge is super handy. Keep in mind that these screws are also the contacts. So you, you don't wanna lose them or use something else. You wanna use, these guys need to go right back there just to, Further highlight that, this is the first screw. So yeah, you, you don't want to lose these. You're never going to find them again. All right, so I stacked them um, in order. They all look to be exactly the same. But once again, they're like super proprietary looking screws. You definitely don't want to, uh, you don't want to lose them. So in theory, this should just come straight up and out. Nice. So I'm going to do what I can to try and clean this little fella up. Um, it kind of looks like a sealed unit, so this, this might be a lost cause. All right, no loss, no foul, because uh, no matter what, it, it doesn't work. Right, so the first relay was uh, pretty easy to release. Whoops, just had a fairly short screw in there. Uh, the second one is in too deep for me to get a screwdriver on it. I mean, this should take the entire dash apart. That's not happening, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna try this. See if I can get it out of that. All right, why this is working, I really couldn't tell you. This is a really long screwdriver. It's bent on an angle. I couldn't get the other screwdriver to fit in there, but. So far, well, I gotta put more pressure on it down, but so far it's unscrewing it. Nothing, nothing short of amazing. <laughs> Otherwise I was gonna have to take all this out. The only way to get this out is to take the whole dash off. And I really didn't want to do that. So now, let's see if I can get to those guys from the bottom somehow, because now that I got these released. So the smaller one is the one that was forward. We'll see what all it right, is. So I'm gonna make a, uh, test jumper for the relay. This is an old cutoff that I had from something else. So what I ended up doing is I pulled out the original terminal that was in there. One of the, they're pretty nasty looking. So what I'm going to end up doing is after I cut these tabs off here, that will snap right inside. As you can see, I got, I got one in there already. I just got to do the other ones because I just don't need the uh, thick wires and thin wires and anything else like that. I just need the thin wires because that's all that's in the truck. Take right those now. wires out of one of these uh, standard connectors. That's um, these come off like fuel pumps, stuff like that. I just needed the connectors that were pre-finished, and I just need the wires. Get that's these all. out. You just put a little flat tip screwdriver right on that tab. You push it straight down, and it'll uh, pull right out through the back. Alright, so once I get one of those out. I'm just going to get my cross-cut dikes out here. Pull this up about as high as it'll go. And just cut it off so it has a slot. And it ends up looking like the other one. And then I get my connector out. And then what I'll have to do is take another one of these out. So these actually have a little pin that lifts up on them. That's going to be hard to see, but... It's a little plastic thing that drops down in the hole. And then I have to pull the wire out at the same time from the back. Let 
we go. So that's released. And I'll take my other wire. I'm not paying any attention to any kind of color codes. It doesn't really matter on this because this is just a pass-through. Slide that right into the slot. And there we go. Now it's in. All right. So I've got that now. And these two ends click together. So the relay is going to go in one end. And then uh, the other end is just going to be a pass-through. And I'll leave some bare lines so I can test the lines. And then after that, I'll just slide the uh, heat shrink tubing up. And I'll have an extension because that's ultimately what I need this thing to be. So my plan is to take the relay from that position there and then send it down underneath the dash to a, a more accessible position so I won't have to take the steering wheel out each time I want to do this. All right, so here's the end result of that little disaster. I've got heat shrink tubing on here so I can slide it up here. As you'll notice, uh, my color codes are, yeah, super sketchy. But as long as they're going one for one straight in, which is exactly what they're doing, then I don't really care. The, uh, the change out in colors, not really going to matter. I just need test terminals, and I need, be, need to be able to connect the relay out at full extension. All right, so i got to hook to my first terminal on there. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn the ignition on. And it registers about nothing. So I'm figuring that's probably a minus. So now I just hook to the next terminal over from that. Turn my ignition again. And that's 1140. That's actually probably a little bit low, but seeing as I'm grounding from the door hinge, that's probably about as good as that's gonna get for right now. I'll turn that off. That's All right, problem. so I flopped the relay over, so now I'm hooked up onto this side here. Turn my ignition. And that's a good solid 12 right there. All right, so I'll cut that off and I'll mark that as positive. I just want to check is that red line, which is this lower one down here. I'm going to turn my ignition on. And that has momentary positive. So that's going through the relay and it's switching it off, which it's supposed to do. I'm going to turn the ignition off again. I'm going to hit it. And then it cuts back off again. Interesting to note, though, that I do not hear the pump cycling on the back of the truck. So even though this is doing what it's supposed to be doing, it's uh, not sending power all the way back through. I'm going to cut it off again. Cut it on. All right, so it seems like that should be working. I think the circuit's... I think the circuit's working. I think that relay that's inside this little fella's so I dead. just put that as, uh, it's the switched positive. So this is on the other side of the switch, and it's after it goes through the relay. All right, so now that I'm done testing, and I've got my, uh, voltages and where they supposedly are. So this one should be the feed coming in from the ignition that actually powers this. And then this in theory, should be the switch side. So that's the that's the hot coming in, and that's the side that goes through the relay. All right, so this is the relay with its pants off. So you can see there's a standard uh, relay in here. There's also some sort of IC chip in here that looks like it's for a timer. Uh, I got a diode in there, a couple of resistors, and a couple of caps. So I'm going to say that these two terminals here are probably the um, the heavy switch leads. All right, so I just yanked out the uh, the wires for the fuel pump because that's the pump. The line that's supposed to be in those captures up there um, goes straight across and connects into the harness. So I figured I would cut a couple feet off of that and then I would just solder into it. So you can see this, this wire looks nice and shiny. This one here does not. That looks pretty corroded and crappy looking, which is not what you want to see that far down a wire. And then I looked at the end of the connector. And the end of the connector is pretty much the same way. 
Let me see if we can get you a better shot of that. So one on the left-hand side is the negative, and you can see how bad that looks. So I'm thinking I may have another problem going on here because that should not look like that. I mean, it, obviously the center core of the wire is still okay, but if the outer sleeve looks that bad, something else is going on here. So I may bypass this wire and then wire it back to the point where I just had it disconnected up here to do my testing. I don't know. <sighs> I should just wait. <laughs> okay. The one on the left is the good one. The one on the right is totally sketch-tastic. That's a lot of uh, the rosin that's on there. I tried to use as much of the acid from the solder as I possibly could to burn through. I've got a connection. It's not falling apart, so I'm going to heat shrink this and kind of call this a day because that's as far as I can go with this um, without just bypassing it and going straight to the pump. All right, heat shrinked, so you can't tell just how horrible that soldering is. Oh, yeah. All right, so I took a razor blade, scraped down the connector a little bit, and I'm direct wiring right to the pump with the speaker wire. Yeah, not ideal, but it is what it is. All right, about there. And the pump runs, good enough. I'm gonna get back under there and I'm gonna wire loom it just so that it doesn't, uh, doesn't look like speaker wire. All right, so my hot lead's gonna carry on further into the truck. So what I did here is I spliced into this. And then I've added my little ground. So I'm going to put this round behind this and then uh, tap that ground into the ground. And then the hot end of it is going to just continue on. So I just basically made a Y in the cable here. In the, uh, the loom anyways. Okay, so what I ended up doing is I ran that loom all the way around. That does, in fact, go under the shock. The other one did too. They, I, they go next to it. I'm not super keen on the way that that's set up, so I may eventually end up putting both of those lines, the existing one and mine, above the shock. But anyways, it keeps traveling on. That I showed you, and then brought that down to here. And that uh, is soldered and brought into a loop and then connected onto the battery terminal. And then the wires continue on that away. I got to most of that through the decking. seat out and I take this out and you look down here I use one of those cheesy connectors that I always tell people do not use these things ever under any circumstance well I used one so that's the hot lead that goes into the coil and I brought that straight into there so the fuel pumps being connected and run by that hot lead so when the ignition's on, the pump's on. So it's, it's basically on live, but it obviously cuts off with the ignition. So there shouldn't be a huge problem there. So I took it for a test drive, uh, runs fine. Obviously I need to put the dash back in, but I had to put the steering wheel back in in order to test drive it. Obviously I left the extended um, relay in here, but I bolted it down here instead of bolting it up top. I left that other relay, whatever that is, bolted up top. And if I ever do need to take this thing out for, for whatever reason, if it does add complications, I can always just disconnect it and take that extension out. No problem. So that is that. We're back on the road again.